So, hi, and welcome to the setup of the flow map canvas. We use a flow map canvas in order to render our flow maps within the Unity engine itself. In the past, we used a sort of clunky ray tracer for this, which was very slow and could hang your engine. However, I wrote a new system that uses render textures and an orthographic camera projection. So in this case, I go to source folder of the asset, I use water shader, scripts, flow map generators, and there we have flow map canvas. So it has three main components, basically a canvas prefab, a flow canvas renderer, and a canvas output, which is our render texture. You can place this canvas below your water surface as a child, enable it. So how does the system work? Well, basically we can place particle systems below our flow map canvas, and we will add them to the P system array. The renderer will take the particle, it will process them and give them a color based on the flow direction and give them a blue channel value based on the speed, velocity or other interactions. We have several buttons here. We have the canvas settings, which exist of the flow layer, clear canvas, grab normal layer and fill normal. Make sure that the canvas output is set in the render texture slot, otherwise the system does not know where it should write to. So in this case, we have our flow map canvas and our particle system set to the flow map layer. If the layer does not exist, you can create your own or set it on an exist layer. Just make sure that the layer where your canvas is on and all its children is selected as a flow layer in this dropdown. The grab normal layer includes every single object that you want to have automatically detected by the flow map uh, renderer. If I click clear canvas, my render texture will be filled with a neutral color. In order to correctly debug this, we can go to our shader and simply enter the canvas output in the flow map texture slot. As you can see, the water stopped moving because there's no information in the texture. If I click fill normals, the water will start moving by default. This is because the normal direction can be interpreted as a flow velocity direction. In areas where the flow is a little bit quiet, foam is already appearing. Of course, the edges are very rough and, and sharp, but this will be blurred out later. We can start from a clear canvas or from a normal based canvas. So I went ahead and set up some particle systems. So we start with a clear canvas. The velocity alpha blending is a value that tells the renderer how much each particle should blend its velocity colors with each other. So the higher this value is, the more dominant the new particle be and overwrite previous pixels. The velocity flow damping basically means how fast you want foam to appear. The lower this value is, the sooner foam will appear and the sooner waves will disappear. If we now go and render our particles, we will see the flow map being generated in real time. Areas where the particles cannot reach, the foam will also stay, so that's an added benefit of this system. And there we have it, we have basic flow values. Of course, this is still all very rough. So if you go to our flow map canvas, we can go to the output settings. We can give the name, a final resolution, and we can even do some post-processing by blurring our image a bit. If I click save flow map, a texture should be generated in your project's root folder. Make sure to disable sRGB so that the shader can interpret every single color value correctly. In order to test out this new flow map, we can simply replace the render texture in our shader. And there we have it. Different flow speeds, different areas where foam will appear, different flow directions, all within a few seconds. Keep in mind that uh, running a lot of particles can be very taxing, so it might be smart to split up your rendering with several particle passes. Of course, you can also add your own textures with the flow direction. You can base them on the flow map reference and it will have a layout of which color is which direction. So if you go to the channel view, you can see what values you need. You can place those planes uh, below the flow map canvas, set them on the flow layer and they will override every other single color that is being generated. So if you want to have areas where there's 100% certainty that the flow goes a certain way, you can override those values with a custom plane. This is the same technique that we are using in the interactive setup. So in here, instead of using a, a flow map directly in the shader, 
we are projecting a flow map on a plane which we use as a background and the flow map canvas is looking at this so the render texture is acting as a flow map but we can override it with custom values in this case we're using a particle system with custom flow values which allows us to create ripples of course you can always take a look for yourself by opening the example scenes and examining the setup the old grid tracer is still provided within the asset, however I do not recommend using it as it's uh, more rigid and less intuitive. That's about it for setting up a flow map. I hope you like it and I hope you create some interesting water surfaces.